Harbor Bridge is a beautiful and familiar part of the Corpus Christi skyline. Completed in 1959, Harbor Bridge was a marvel of engineering and enabled Corpus Christi's economic growth in the 20th century. At the time, it was the largest single project ever completed by the Texas Highway Department, which today is known as TxDOT. Their design was both elegant and innovative. Its pioneering use of materials set standards for bridges across Texas and beyond. Join us as we explore the engineering history of the 1959 Corpus Christi Harbor Bridge. Local business and civic leaders opened the port of Corpus Christi in 1926. To enter the port, ships navigated a 90-foot wide opening crossed by a small drawbridge on U.S. Highways 181 and 77. By the 1950s, the Texas oil industry was booming and the port was busier than ever. Every day, massive oil tankers and cargo ships approached the port. The 1926 drawbridge creaked open as each ship approached. Some captains called it threading the needle. More than a few ships collided with the bridge, resulting in costly repairs. Several times a day, cars piled up as ships slowly made their way through the raised drawbridge. Everyone could see that the port's narrow entrance was both a bottleneck and a hazard. Something needed to be done. The port and the U.S. Corps of Engineers drew up plans for a much wider channel. The Texas Highway Department's bridge division took on the job of designing and building a new bridge. The bridge would need to be strong enough to span the channel without obstructions in the water and tall enough for massive ships. And construction could not block the port's entrance, even temporarily. Luckily, the team was up to the challenge. In the 1950s, the Texas Highway Department was home to award-winning forward-thinking engineers and designers. We had some as some good people. Yeah. No, really, people have a lot to do with it. A team, including designer Vigo Miller, began work designing the bridge. Their charge was to create a bridge that was both elegant and cost-effective. Bridge design has a lot of elements. One of them is aesthetics. One of them is strength, so somebody has to say how strong it's going to be. Then you have geometric design, how wide it ought to be, and clearances and things like that. The careful plans and calculations were completed without the aid of modern computers. Interestingly enough, everything was done with a slide rule and, and a hand crank calculator. The technology of the time didn't hold back the Harbor Bridge team. We had a number of engineers that I thought were, were very good in, in being self-starters in the sense of trying something new. Vigo Miller's design for Harbor Bridge called for a long, elegant arch composed of steel triangles called trusses. In order to span the ship channel without any supports in the water, Miller designed the bridge's arch with three main sections. The section on either end would be built first and cantilevered out over the channel. Finally, the middle section would be connected between them, its weight supported on both sides. This design created a tall, wide area under the bridge for ships. In 1956, construction began from both sides of the channel. The cantilevered design allowed the bridge to be built without temporary vertical supports in the channel that would have blocked ship traffic. But the team had to complete complicated calculations by hand to ensure that the two sides would meet in the middle. They brought it back, they brought it back and gave me the job of checking all of the shop plans and the erection procedures so that the thing would close. They didn't have any computer programs for that kind of stuff. Ultimately, the team's calculations were successful. Lined up, Lined up the they put the pin in, and they had a suspended span in the middle. Worked perfectly. The 1959 Harbor Bridge was considered the pinnacle of steel truss engineering. Due to its expense, steel was being phased out of major bridge construction, but no one could deny its beauty and utility. Oh, I like steel structures because you can be more innovative do more with them. They're more graceful. They're prettier. While the bridge's steel arch is eye-catching, some of the most innovative elements of the overall bridge are easy to miss. For the approach spans, designer Jim Graves decided to use a brand new technology called pre-stressed concrete. 
This type of concrete is reinforced with tension steel strands. This method uses much less steel than reinforced concrete. At the time, the technology was so new that there were no state or federal standard designs. But that didn't stop the Harbor Bridge designers. All the beams for Harbor Bridge were original designs that were built on site. Well, you mentioned Jim Graves was a visionary in it. We weren't afraid to go stick our neck out if we thought the, the engineering would uh, prove it out. And so the pre-stressed beams came into being. Graves was also the first engineer to adapt neoprene pads for bridge construction. The pads cushioned the concrete beams, absorbing shock from car and truck traffic. Graves' use of neoprene pads caught on and was soon used on bridges around the world. We were kind of out in the forefront on most of it and uh, felt that we had the expertise here to develop it rather than sit back and depend on somebody else. In 1959, Harbor Bridge opened to great fanfare. A parade of civic leaders, dignitaries, and military vehicles drove over the bridge, marking the beginning of an era of growth for Corpus Christi. The bridge made the port accessible to larger ships, and within a few years, the port was one of the busiest in the nation. In later years, the bridge's nighttime light show dazzled locals and tourists alike, earning it a place in the hearts of generations of Texans. The Harbor Bridge served as the gateway to Corpus Christi for over 70 years. In 2014, planning began for an even larger cable stay bridge. Like its predecessor, this bridge is an incredible feat of engineering that will open a new chapter in the history of Corpus Christi. It will also mean the end of a beloved landmark. The 1959 Harbor Bridge reflected the innovations of a golden age of Texas bridge building and defined the city of Corpus Christi for generations.